Hey there, this is Captain Andrew Morris from the City of Newberry Fire Department. Today we're going to be taking a look at nozzles. Nozzle selection has a big part to play in stream efficiency and our DPMs and achieving that. Uh, one of the big things that we're going to be looking at is the effectiveness of our stream and how the difference, the smooth bores versus the fog nozzles, how the bale itself or the shut off affects it, how the valve affects it, about a ball valve versus a plunger style. We're going to look at a lot of different things and show you the data on that. Achieving our desired gallons per minute is a huge part of nozzle selection, but it can't be everything. We've got to consider our staffing. If we're overworking our crews, their longevity in that fire is going to be diminished. We may actually have to back down on our GPMs to meet our crew expectations. Even technique can have, play a big part in that. One thing that we can do with a smooth bore is we can actually use over pump or under pump to kind of compensate for this. With our fog nozzle, they're a little less versatile, especially if it's a fixed GPM. Even things like bail handles can have an impact on our crews operating the line. One of the biggest impacts though is the valve. This is a traditional ball valve. With this plunger style valve, water flows around that plunger until we close the nozzle, at which point the plunger is pushed up to a stop. This is a ball valve. This one is a double cut. The double cut can create some problems because it breaks up that stream. It's more of a problem with a smooth bore and a solid stream, uh, but it can also cause a little bit of trouble for us with a fog stream. The fog is already a broken stream, even if we're on that straight stream pattern, but it can create a little bit less reach for us, which we evaluate here in a moment. This is a TFT Metro 1 with a plunger style valve. It does have the discs, so it is a fixed GPM nozzle flowing 160 at 50. Our cones are set apart at 15 feet per cone, and as you can see, our reach on this hose stream is 46 feet, and that's truly our full extension on that hose stream. That's not really the point that it's breaking up. It breaks up before that, about 15 feet from the nozzle. We truly have a broken stream. Next up is the TFT Metro 1. The bale is a ball shutoff. This is a solid ball. It's actually a stainless steel ball. And we're starting with the fog nozzle. You can see right away we're flowing 160 at 50 GPM and we are getting better reach out of the ball valve. We actually achieved about 10 feet more reach. We're at 57 feet stream before the stream fails. So before that, we do have the stream breaking up a significant amount, but we have much better reach, and the only difference is the ball valve. Next up is the TFT. This is the same bale that we were using with the previous test, but the only thing we've changed here is we've put a smooth bore. So this is still 160 at 50 PSI. This is the 7 8 inch tip. And you can see by the stream that we have far, far more reach and a much more effective stream. We really don't have much breakup until about 30 feet, our second cone. After that, it gets a little choppy and there's a lot more turbulence in there. This is a solid steel, stainless steel ball, and our reach is actually 74 foot. Next up is Elkhart Brass Chief XD series. We're going to be looking at the fog nozzle first. This is going to be the XD 160 at 50, and then we'll look at the smoothbore 7 8. So on the fog, this is going to be a steel ball bale, and this is a solid stainless steel ball. And we have it 160 at 50 achieving our desired GPM and you can see that our stream is pretty solid here We have pretty good reach uh, better reach than our previously evaluated nozzles um, And we don't have much break apart once again until around that 30 foot cone uh, Once again, these cones are 15 feet apart So the overall length on this fog stream was actually 68 foot stream Looking at the smooth bore, this is the 7.8, so we're 160 at 50. And this is the Chief XD bale with a solid stainless steel ball. 
we are achieving our 160 at 50, and we had the farthest reach at 75 feet for our strain. We did see a little bit more chatter around the 30 foot mark, but we had more continuity throughout the stream. Next up is Akron Brass. This is gonna be the 7 8 inch tip, so our target is 160 at 50. And this bale is actually a plastic ball. It is a solid ball, but it is a plastic ball. So our stream was excellent. Uh, there were very little areas within the play pipe or the bale to cause trouble. And so we actually had a reach of 82 feet with an excellent stream uh, that didn't break apart very much at all. One of the things we wanted to demonstrate was a selectable or an adjustable GPM nozzle. So we chose this Akron 125 at 75 nozzle. We're going to start at 90 GPM and you can see that our stream is decent. Uh, there is a lot of turbulence and break apart in the stream itself. One of the things to note is that when we go to 30 GPM, you basically have that same looking stream. It's just way less nozzle reaction because you're getting way less water, one third the amount of water. Can be a major concern for crews that maybe would think they're getting more water than they actually are. When evaluating nozzles, gallons per minute does play a big part, but so does staffing. We don't want to wear our crews out with that nozzle reaction. We've got to pace ourselves. Another thing is stream reach. Uh, that continuity of that stream, the ability to reach a far place, those can all have a direct impact on our fire attack. The things like the, the ball valve or the plunger valve, that double cut ball valve, those can have an impact on the reach and the effectiveness of our stream. Not to mention nozzles like automatic nozzles versus fixed nozzles, which have that stem or disc that we can replace. Or, or even the adjustable or selectable nozzles, which can be very, very misleading for crews. At the end of the day, nozzles are a very important element that we need to dedicate some time to so our crews know the equipment before they have to use it.